You are now entering a techie zone. Welcome back into the mind of the techies world. And we have two PowerBook G4 Titaniums sitting here. Now, if you've seen the uh, unboxing video of these, these are the two PowerBook G4 Titaniums that I bought off of eBay. Um, and both of these are in basically brand new condition. These are in an amazing condition. I have done some work to these machines, some upgrades, and uh, this is the update video following the unboxing video for the two PowerBook G4s. So let's get started. So let's start off with this one. Interestingly enough, this one right here was the one that wouldn't even turn on. Uh, if you watch the unboxing video of these two uh, PowerBooks, this is the one that acted like it was lifeless, like the thing was dead. Well, come to find out that I did a little researching on... Um, I did a little Google search on it, and it comes to find out that when the pram battery or the clock battery in these goes dead, um, the the computer will act completely lifeless, like it's completely dead. And the only way to permanently fix it is to obviously replace the PRAM battery. Um, but finding a, a PRAM battery for this is probably going to be hard to find. So uh, there's a little trick you can do by unplugging the PRAM battery and plugging it back in and um, that will usually sometimes get it to work again. The reason I think what happened with this was because this is the one that, um, uh, according to the listing, uh, both of these machines sat for quite a long time in a closet. And uh, when they sit for so long with no power being drawn into them and dead batteries uh, and not being connected to AC power, uh, that ultimately could have led to the, pram, to the uh, PRAM battery going dead in this one. Uh, so this one still has a dead PRAM battery, but it works now. Basically, it's easy to get it to work again. All you have to do is just unplug the PRAM battery. And the PRAM battery is located underneath the optical drive here. So you take out the optical drive, and underneath it you'll find this little pack of cells. And that pack of cells is the, is the PRAM battery, and it has a little cable that runs to it. And it goes to a little um, a daughter board and then the daughter board connects to the logic board. And uh, all you have to do is just unplug the battery from the daughter board, plug it back in, and uh, you should be good to go. Um, if your titanium power book has a dead PRAM battery, that's what you can do to get yours working again. So that's how I got this one working. Um, just before I open it up here, take you through, just in case you didn't see the unboxing video, uh, and you just found this video on YouTube or on the internet somewhere. Uh, so let's take a look around. This is the titanium power book released in 2001. Uh, this is the very machine that started a um, little separation there between the case. Um, this was the machine that started Apple's love affair with metal. And uh, everything, this is made out of actual titanium. You can see here around the front, all you have is just uh, the latch and the optical drive slot. On this side, you have airport antenna, fans, and a security lock. On the back, you have DC jack there for power. I'll explain what that is in a second. And IRDA. That's infrared if you wanted to connect to a digital camera, one of the early digital cameras. On here you have your headphone jack, cooling vent, PCM. Uh, we have a PC card slot, the eject button for the PC card slot, and the other airport antenna. Back to this little thing on the back. This thing on the back was a staple in Apple uh, portables for quite a long time, ever since the 90s. This is called a port door. And what you do is you flip this door down and inside of here exposes all your ports. So here you have a Firewire 400, 10100 Ethernet, USB, I believe that's 1.1, a cooling fan, VGA video out, S video out, a reset switch, and a modem. Uh, so all the ports are hidden behind this door. And as I mentioned in the unboxing video, these little doors here are very fragile. Um, they constantly break. This door is actually made out of metal compared to the door that was on the G3 PowerBook and all the other PowerBooks of the 90s. They were made out of plastic. These doors had a very tendency to break off. People would, um, you know, people would leave these doors open because all the ports are on the back here. So it was kind of inconvenient to get to all the ports and people would leave them open. They'd pick them up and they'd fall off and they'd break off. And it was just a mess. So it's a long lost feature in computers, a port door. Well, it was well intended. It was a real pain in the rear end because you had to constantly open them and close them and it was just a complete disaster. Um, but fortunately, we don't have port doors anymore. 
They were just a complete disaster. Um, one thing Apple made a big thing about with this is the logo is right side up. Um, on the old uh, G3 PowerBook and all the other PowerBooks that preceded it, uh, the logo was turned the other way around. Uh, there's many theories why the logo was that way. Some people believe it had something to do with the user experience, that people would try opening it from the wrong side. Uh, so having the logo face the user when they open it helps them figure out which way to open the computer. I don't really know. There's several theories um, suggested as to why the logo was that way, but they turned it right side up, and yes, it does light up. Um, this I, I believe besides the last version of the G3 PowerBook, um, this was one of the first Apple portables to feature a light-up Apple logo. Um, because the clamshell iBooks didn't have a light-up Apple logo, the very last version of the G3 PowerBooks did. I believe it was the Pismo, or the uh, Pismio, or however you pronounce that, Pismo. Um, I believe it was the last version of the G3 PowerBook that incorporated the light-up Apple logo. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and open it up. And inside of here, again, one of the things that is just wowed me with these machines is how well they are just so nice. Um, usually right around here on the palm rest area, uh, all this paint would start chipping off and it would look nasty. Around here by the screen hinges, um, A, number one, the screen hinges would break. First of all, the hinges on the Titanium PowerBook were not all that strong. Uh, and they would constantly break and split apart. Um, but this one has nice, strong, good hinges, and the paint isn't chipped off from the hinges either. So after normal use, these titanium power books really start to look gross because the paint chips off and it's just a mess. Um, here we have, this is actually a translucent keyboard. Uh, whoa, I think I zoomed in a little too much there. Uh, this is actually a translucent keyboard. It's basically a um, translucent piece of plastic with a black spray paint on it. Um, it isn't, it's still see-through, I don't know if you can see, you can still kind of see through the keys, but it obviously isn't backlit like my MacBook Pro. Uh, that feature obviously didn't exist back then, although that would have been a nice feature to have a backlit keyboard on, on, this, on this machine. Um, it unfortunately didn't exist then, you have to go all the way to the 17-inch um, PowerBook for that, is when they started introducing that. We got dual speakers here, a left and a right channel speaker. As a matter of fact, I find this to be absolutely sick that the sound system in the 15-inch PowerBook G4 Titanium sounds better than the sound system in the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Uh, <laughs> that's just a little scary when you think about it. The sound system in, in the MacBook Pro, uh, in the 13-inch MacBook Pro, is um, uh, it leaves much to be desired, let's just say. But again, I didn't buy the 13-inch for its awesome sound quality. Um, the 13-inch machines don't have good sound quality, so... But anyway, I digress. So, sound system here, got your uh, sweet, your uh, sleep light right there, and PowerBook G4 branded right there onto, whoa, onto the screen. There it is there. Got your latch up here. There is no webcam on these. Of course, PowerBooks did not come with a webcam. Go to the MacBook Pro for that. So let's go ahead and power it on. Oh, before I do, though, let's lift the keyboard up. There's two tabs on the keyboard, one on each side. This was a staple in uh, Apple Portables for quite a long time, was these two tabs on the keyboard. You lift the keyboard up, there's your RAM slots. It now has an airport card. This is the original 802.11b uh, airport card. And there's the two RAM bays. This can hold a maximum of one gig of RAM, and I have upgraded the RAM on this. Funny story about the RAM, though. Um, I'll take this one out here. Um, this is the RAM that I ordered, two 512 megabyte sticks, as that's the maximum these slots can take, giving it a maximum of one gig. Well, what happened is this RAM module is good, the other one is bad. So I stuck one of the 128 meg modules back in here. This machine had 256 megs shipped from the factory, I believe. Um, or somebody upgraded them later on, I'm not sure which. But um, I went to do a full one gig upgrade on this, and um, the RAM module is bad. This one is good, the other one is bad. I don't have it with me, it's upstairs in the tech room, but um, the other 512 megabyte stick is bad. And um, what happens is the computer kernel panics. And when you start getting kernel panics, that's usually a good indication that you have bad RAM. And uh, so that RAM module is no good, and um, I unfortunately can't 
you know, return it because I bought it as a one gig upgrade kit. I got the two 512 sticks together as an uh, as a um, uh, upgrade kit, so I can't send one back. I have to send both of them back, but this one is still good. Um, so I could still get a, a 512 megabyte module. I think I can get them for like six bucks. So I'm gonna have to order another one, but still, I put one of the 128 meg modules back in there. And uh, so that gives this computer like 768 megs, which it can hold a maximum of one gig, but that's the best I can do right now until I can get the other five to until I get another 512 megabyte module to replace it. Let's go ahead and power it up. Now what I've done to this computer is obviously I have upgraded the RAM on it, as I just said. It, w it should have a full one gig, but um, obviously it doesn't takes a second for the drive to be recognized and then it starts booting. I did upgrade the hard drive. I bought a nice um, 40 gig hard drive for this. Um, so it has a 40 gigabyte hard drive in it with a fresh load. It's not fresh anymore, but with a nice clean load of OS 10.4 Tiger 10.4.11, which is the highest this machine can hold natively. Um, in theory, these can hold 10.5 Leopard um, if you install it on another machine. Um, this machine does have FireWire and it will run Leopard, but you have to take the hard drive out and image it on a machine that does support the um, requirements. Because Leopard requires an 867, this is only a 400. So, um, and besides, running Leopard on a slow machine like this just isn't recommended. So, Tiger's where it maxes out. So, let's go ahead and get into um, about this Mac here. Originally, when I took shipment of these, I thought these were 500 megabyte. Um, I thought these were 500 megahertz models, as they had 256 megs of RAM, and the upper end models had 256 megs of RAM. But this actually is a 400. It is the slowest of the two original PowerBook G4s. Um, so somebody had upgraded the RAM at some point to, to uh, 256. That's the RAM that's in there now, 640 megs, and fully updated to 10.4.11 which is the highest it can hold. The battery on this is okay. Um, I think the battery, I think both of these batteries have a couple dead cells, so um, finding genuine batteries for these are gonna be hard, so eh, I may end up at some point, I may end up trying to rebuild the battery pack or just leave it the way it is. There's a couple dead cells I've noticed um, in this, but still the charge is still pretty good on it. A uh, load of software on here. What do I've got in terms of software that I've loaded on this machine? Well, as you see here, there's no scrolling trackpads. I was trying to do the two-finger scroll. Can't do that. So on this machine, we obviously have um, Apple Works. One of my favorite applications, the long-lost Apple Works. I mean, who can ever forget it? It was amazing. I've installed a version of... Um, uh, Final Cut Pro. This is Final Cut Pro 4, and I probably won't be doing any video editing on this computer anyway, but um, I loaded it on there just in case I ever wanted to fool around with the old version of Final Cut. It's in there. Uh, iLife is obviously in here. iTunes. Office 04 is in here. Um, I thought I installed... Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't put it on here. Um, I thought I had Mavis Beacon on here. I have a copy of that, and I thought I put it on here, because I have it on the G4 iBook, and I think also on the Power Mac. I have it loaded on there, and I thought I put it on here, but I guess I didn't. Uh, but yeah, I do have a version, and I think it was one of the last versions of it to be made for the Mac, and I do have a version of it, but I didn't put it on here for some reason. Web browsing. Um, for web browsers, again, we have WebKit and Firefox. There is a um, browser out there called 10.4 Fox, which is um, a modern fork, which is a fork of the modern Firefox. Unfortunately, it doesn't run very well on this computer. I've downloaded it and it is painfully slow, uh, slower than most. So this is the last version of Firefox to be made for the PowerPC. I think it's 3.6.28. And this WebKit is a modified version of a newer version of WebKit to run on PowerPC Max. Normally, I just use WebKit. 
it's probably the best browser to use on PowerPC systems. I don't think it's a current version of WebKit, but you know, what can you do? Web browsing on these machines are quite limited. So here we are, let's go ahead and um, load the Apple homepage here. Browsing speed is hmm, okay. I mean, we're only transmitting, you know, our data speed's only 11 megabits per second. So, it's going to be a bit slow. And here's the Apple homepage here. See, rendering is pretty good here. Um, YouTube will not work. Um, as many of you who own PowerPC machines know, YouTube on these computers is out of the question. Um, I don't know. I haven't tried running YouTube on this, but I guess we'll try that. Your browser is no longer supported, obviously. <laughs> Your browser is depreciated. <laughs> That's funny. Here we are. Wonderful world of the techies world. Um, again, it's going to be quite slow. <laughs> it's just... Jeez. <laughs> The slowness factor. Um, let's see. My latest video, the Airport Extreme Base Station. <clears throat> I'm not expecting good things. Um, on other PowerPC machines, you can get good YouTube video if you lower the quality settings. But I'm not expecting good things to come out of this. It may or may not do it. <laughs> yeah, YouTube on this is kind of out of the question. There is, well, there used to be, um, I think there still is, an app called UView that you can download, and it will allow you to view YouTube videos. I think they just updated it not too long ago. Um, and I th thought I had U, uh, UView on here, but I guess I don't. Yeah, it's laggy terribly. It's terrible. Um, okay, stop, 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 stop. Um, yeah, that's going at probably 360. That's probably going at 360p. I don't know if it would do any better. Um, under 240, it, it, it's just too slow. Um, YouTube on power PC machines, it's it's kind of out of the question. Um, so, but yes, that is the PowerBook G4. It's actually keeping time and date now because I have it set over the internet through Apple server where when it's connected to the internet, it'll find the date and time. Um, and the machine still boots, obviously, because it's got a functioning, it's got a fully charged battery, it's plugged in, so um, that clock battery should be fine for now until I get a chance to replace it. So that is PowerBook number one. Let's go ahead and switch over to the second PowerBook. So yeah, this has got that um, little latch issue. I haven't figured out exactly what is causing that latch to do that, but I'm sure that would probably just be an easy fix. It's probably something with the latch button. I have to look at that. This one, though, um, recently started developing some uh, issues. And uh, I'll show you what it does. Basically, before we get into that, though, Basically underneath here, it's the exact same thing here. This has the stock 256 megs of RAM here. Let me um, get this one out. These are the two sticks that were originally in here, 128 megs each for 256. Um, but this one started developing some issues. See, I took the airport. I did buy two new airport cards. I took it out of here. Um, and I'll tell you why. This one has temperamental issues. And uh, I think this one might have a bad logic board, and here's how I've determined that. Um, when you power it on, all you get is a white screen. Um, if the hard drive is connected to the logic board, if the hard drive is connected to the logic board, all you get is a white screen. 
if you disconnect the hard drive cable from the logic board, you'll get the blinking folder icon. I've tried booting the machine off my OS X installer disk, which is a genuine copy of OS X, by the way, a genuine retail copy, and all I get is the Apple logo and no spinning gear. Um, and that usually is an indication that there's some that the machine can't boot. And I'll show you what that does. Oh no, wait, I forgot. <laughs> this one has a dead um, battery. This uh, the uh, battery that's in here is absolutely dead. Um, I can't get it to retain a charge, so we have to swap batteries here. So I have to set the camera while I swap batteries with the two machines. The battery that's in this one isn't any good. Um, I can't get it to retain a charge anymore. So it's definitely got some issues. I've tried putting it in the other power hook as well and it just won't charge. So that battery is completely dead. But anyway. So so yeah, as you'll see, all we're going to get here is just that. Um, and I don't know if you can listen carefully, but there's no hard drive noise either. Um, the hard drive will not spin up. And I already took the drive out of here, the drive and the ribbon cable itself, put it in this power book, and it, and it spun up. Uh, the drive out of this one spins up in this one and boots, but it won't boot up in here. With the hard drive ribbon cable connected, that's all we get. If I disconnect the hard drive ribbon cable, I get the blinking folder icon. If I try putting in my OS X installer disk and try booting off of it, all I get is the Apple logo and no spinning gear. Uh, so this one has some temperamental power issues somewhere. Um, but this one has a good clock battery. This one has a good PRAM battery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one apart. I'm going to get the PRAM battery out of this one and stick it in this one because this was the one that has that dead PRAM battery. This one is still good. As you can see, that's all we're going to get is just that. It's really sad because I really wanted both of these working. Um, but as I stated in the unboxing video, I'm not disappointed that one of these doesn't work. Because they're old machines, and when and when you know these computers are senior citizens, and when they start becoming old, they start developing random issues. And uh, this actually was the working one, and I had it working. I had it fully restored. I had it booted up. I had it uh, dual booted to OS nine, OS nine two two, and OS ten four. And I went to turn it on one day, and that's all it gave me. So um, it's definitely got some power issues. It's either got power problems or a logic board problem. Either way, it's not really worth fixing because A, if it's a logic board problem, finding a logic board for this would cost more than what the machine's actually worth. So, I don't know, I'll just keep it for parts for this unit because this is the working unit. I can transfer parts off of this one onto this one if need be, especially that clock battery. I'm gonna have to get that clock battery out of there and conduct surgery and put it into that one so it has a good clock battery. Um, but yeah. This one ultimately has some uh, power problems. Again, not all that upset because I didn't pay a lot for these computers. Um, so, But at least I'll have this one because, because I really wanted both of these working because I had some cool plans, but unfortunately, that's not going to happen. But anyway, that is the update video on the two PowerBook G4 Titaniums. Coming up next in the Techies World Pipeline, we will have the toilet seat computer, the iBook clamshell. Um, work has been done to this machine. It is a fully working machine once again with upgrades and new parts and stuff like that. So that will be the next video to come down the line from the Techies World Pipeline. Look for that. That's coming soon. So I'm going to end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe, leave a comment and all that stuff. And I'll see you next time. Yo, fresh haircut, fresh cars, fresh homeboys, fresh stars. About to bring four girls back five stars. Famous, without the fuss, I'm hard. From